uh, hello guys i already shared a learning achievement badge on chatbox so guys uh, go and redeem your badge you just have to follow the step and you will get the activated badge if you are facing any problem let me know on chatbox i will explain you again Guys, after the your batch, put done on chat box so I can see how many uh, how many are done with the batch. Uh, I will explain you uh, how you can redeem your badge. Wait. Guys, first you have to create Microsoft Learn account. I already created. If you are uh, already created, no need to create again. If you are not created, first create your Microsoft Learn account. Then you can go with that URL. Here you can see the redeem button. You just have to click on that redeem button. I already redeem. Uh, if you are not redeem, you will show the redeem button and you can click that redeem button. If you want to see batch on Microsoft profile, you can see like this. Wait. Under courses. Here you can see your batch. If you want to share you any platform, you can share it on any social media platform like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. And if you want, uh, if you want to print your certification, you can like this. And this certification you can you can share with any platform.
and if you click on this you will get all study material whatever sir is teaching today so guys go and read in your batch uh, if if you are still facing any problem let me know on chat box this is print button uh, here you can click on print and uh, you will see your certification Uh, guys, those who are remaining, please rede redeem your badge and put done on chat box so I can see who are done with the badge.
Hello, Arshi. Uh, please let me know when to start. Huh? I'll just speak. Yes, sir, you can start now. I'll share my screen. So guys, uh, 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 these people also in my entire ID, the people who have just given the email address uh, just before lunch. I don't think I'm out of this. Yeah, so that was the last person I've added. Okay, uh, so those who have uh, I've added recently, they should receive the email. You know, they they require to uh, accept the invitation. You will receive the uh, email invitation from my side. Uh, you have to accept that invitation. And during the accept, you know, acceptance process, uh, you will register yourself for the uh, DevOps, uh, sorry, uh, for the Microsoft Azure. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Uh, So after this, uh, you know, we'll we'll touch upon uh, two topics. Uh, first, uh, we will see a network. You know, I will create a virtual network. You know, and I'll uh, deploy a couple of virtual machines inside that uh, virtual network. Okay, and we'll see uh, the connectivity between uh, those two virtual machines. Okay, and uh, after that, uh, okay, uh, we will see app service. Okay, and uh, we will try and deploy that application on a app service. No? So we'll see app service deployment also. Okay, uh, so let's go and start. So I'll start with a diagram. No? So what actually uh, we are going to do. So I will go and create something called as a resource in the uh, in the subscription. That resource is going to act as a okay, uh, maybe a virtual network. You know? So I'll just go and have a couple of virtual network. You know, so I'll just go and create a couple of virtual network. So maybe uh, this is your network one. This is going to be your network. Virtual network two. So this is your. Oh God, I just closed it accidentally. Open. Let me open the Edge browser once again. Let me go inside portal. Okay, and what I want to do, 
I will be creating I will be creating a virtual machines. OK, and um, you know, uh, I will be deploying that virtual machine in a particular uh, you know, virtual network. You know? So currently I'm unable to draw the diagram. So I think I need to uh, one restart of a machine. So you can see I'm unable to draw. So what we are going to do, let's quickly understand. So we are going to create a couple of virtual network. You know, so this is going to be your virtual network uh, one. Okay. So maybe we need a virtual network, and this is going to be we need B virtual network. Okay. So what is virtual network? You know. So network, which is we are going to set up virtually, which is not, of course, uh, going to be present physically. OK, so network which we are going to set up virtually that is called as a virtual network as as simple as that. Uh, in a simple terms, you know, a network which is present virtually, you know, that is called as a virtual network. OK. So. Now inside this virtual network. Inside this virtual network, I will go and deploy. OK, something called as. Virtual machine. Okay. So for example, I am having a virtual machine. OK, and virtual machine is. Created inside the virtual network. OK, and there is one more virtual machine you no know, present over here okay and you're going to create the virtual network over here virtual machine over here also and we will you know, try and observe the connectivity between these you know, virtual machines so whether you know this virtual machine is able to communicate to this one okay on you know this one is able to connect to this the first one or not. You know. So. By default connectivity will not be allowed. Huh? OK, so to in order to uh, achieve that connectivity, huh? what can be done? We will see that. OK, so in this particular section, what we are going to observe, what we are going to implement, what we are going to learn. The first concept we will learn. Virtual network. OK. In the virtual network, I may go and create a subnet. OK, we will explore some concept of IP addresses. OK, and finally, uh, you know, we'll explore something called as a network security group. And finally, we will uh, explore the concept of a virtual machine. You know, so all these concepts uh, we will go and learn. Along with that, you know, in order to you know, communicate, we need something called as a network pairing. You know, so You know, so we'll understand. We'll try and implement the concept of a network pairing also. OK, so these are the pot points uh, we will be talking about. Uh, you know, OK, uh, maybe till till our tea break, maybe around uh, uh, 4, 4, 15. You know, we will be talking about this point. OK, so let's go and implement all these points. And while implementing, we'll discuss you know, about about that you know, in detail. So uh, let me save this. So let me just need a zero file. OK, guys, so you know uh, we'll be talking about these points. So let me see whether I was just saying something.
plus that virtual network get resource allocated. Uh, I'm trying to understand Mahindra. Your question is you are trying to ask us at virtual network get resource allocated. Uh, so I'm just uh, you know creating a virtual network and we can deploy that uh, you know any resource inside that virtual network. So for example, virtual machine is one resource. We can deploy that you know uh, resource inside that uh, virtual net, uh, network also. So we can deploy. It is not going to happen automatically, but we will have to do it. OK, I hope uh, Mahindra, you are able to. Yes, sir. Yeah. OK, so now uh, let us go and create our virtual network and uh, everybody should have access on a training resource. On my training resource group because I have provided a read access on the training resource group, you know, so whatever resource I'm going to create, you should be able to see those resources. You should be able to see that configuration. You should be able to see, you know, everything. Uh, but uh, I believe the new users I have added, they should not be having access on uh, training resource group. I will be adding them uh, into that group, uh, you know. So once I add them into the group, uh, they will also have the access. OK, so I'll go and create. What you want to create? I want to create a virtual network. You know? So what do you want to create? Virtual network. You know? So there is a concept called as virtual network. So network fee which we are going to set up virtually. OK. So when I go and choose virtual network it will ask me to create a virtual network okay so let me just go and create a virtual network and i will choose my subscription which subscription do i want to use you know so i'm having currently one active subscription so i will be making use of that but definitely it is possible to have a multiple subscription attached to one single tenant that is also possible. OK. Then I will choose the resource group. You know, this is my resource group training resource group and I'll choose my. Virtual network name, so the name of my virtual network is going to be VNet, you know, A. So that is the name of my virtual network. OK. So by default, you know that virtual network have some IP address. You know. So what is that IP address? You know, that is normally called as you know. Uh, this is your base address range. Okay. So 10.0.0.0 slash 16. You know. So this is basically I am just providing CIDR notation. No, so I'm just actually having CIDR notation. So I the long form of that is classless interdomain routing. You know. So typically, uh, if you are come coming from a networking background, on-premise network, if you have set up a network, uh, there are certain classes: class A, class B. So rather than having those classes, you know, this is you know classless interdomain routing CIDR. So this notation is you know, CIDR. So as per that notation, okay, as per this, so your address range is this, and slash 16 means you will get total of you know this IP addresses. 65,536 IP address you will get. OK, and this is I'm talking about related to the private IPs. I'm not discussing uh, with the public IP. I'm discussing related to the private IP. OK. So I'll just come to that, uh, you know, OK, uh, come to this point and I'll just uh, 
dig into that point also but as of now let me just go and you know create the virtual network with this address space and there is a default subnet so you should have an you know subnet deploy inside the virtual network it is compulsory to have a subnet at least a subnet at least a one subnet should have the name of the subnet can be anything and same way i'm just going and giving you know cdn annotation so slash 24 so you will get here in this subnet you will get maximum ip address 256 okay so i'll just going with the default setting i'll just say review plus create okay so like that i will have one more virtual network I just created VNet A. Just like that, I'll have one more virtual network called as VNet B. So once it is created, in my case, it is created, you know, so you can go to that resource or else if you just go into the training resource group, you will find one resource. You know, and this is the resource which we have created just now. So if you go inside this. You know, so you will be able to see the configuration, but uh, since you are having a reader permission, you won't be able to do any kind of a changes in that configuration, but definitely you will be able to see, you know, all the configuration. OK. So I need one more. Virtual network. I'll just go and do. Create virtual network. I'll choose network uh, training resource group. And I'll say. B net B and I'll just confirm what is my address range. OK, now in this case it is giving a same address range which I have already used in the case of a uh, V net. No. no. So I don't want to use a same address range for both the you know, uh, virtual network. OK. Because that reason I'll tell you later. OK, but I do want to change this. Or maybe I'll just go and make this as a 20. Okay, and I'll just need. This address also to be changed. I'll come over here. Like this. OK, so I'll save it. And I'll just go and create. So once I create uh, virtual networks, I will go and deploy. I'll go and try to deploy a virtual machine inside, you know, uh, those two virtual network. OK, so see whether people are saying something. You're not having access, guys. Uh, no, nobody is able to uh, see that page. I think you should be able to see because in this case, if the user one, if user one is saying, OK. Let me just go and log out and log in. Uh, you just do log out and log in once. Let's just try with the user one so that I'll understand. Ah. 
Okay, no. Uh, so let me just provide that access once again to you. Uh, I'll go to my entire ID. I'll make sure my group is present. External group is present. Currently, there are 82 member. So member uh, is now difficult to me to track you know, who are not the part of this. But guys, can you just uh, you know, uh, let me know who is not part of this? Who want access? The user specifically I have added later. Can they uh, tell? What email address you have provided, Palak? You see, uh, there are uh, no, al almost uh, 82 users I have already added. Uh, so there are, before lunch break, uh, there are few users I have added. Uh, oh, sorry, after lunch break, there are few users I have added. Maybe seven to eight users. So those people should provide. If you are already part of this, you don't need to provide. No need, guys. You need because you are already part of uh, the Active Directory. Okay, anyways, uh, it is going to be dif difficult for me to manage otherwise. Okay, uh, so I'll just give these member, 82 uh, member, you know, okay, a read access on my training resource group. Okay, so I'll go to the training resource group. I'll select an option access control, identity and access management. No, and I'll just go and add a role. Okay, so what role you want to add? So we'll be adding reader role to whom? You know, so I want to assign this role to the group. There is a group called as external user. We have created uh, you know, before our lunch break, I'll add that external user group and I'll say review plus assign. You know, so once you see this review plus assign, uh, all the users should have access. And additionally, let me just go and provide the access on my member user, user one. So for user one, I will give contributor access. So the user one should be able to create or manage anything. So user one, I'll just go on. Okay, select this permission. Okay, and I'll assign the permission to the user one also. Okay, guys. I'm not sure whether you are providing this X. No. Uh, are you guys providing it for the first time or you know, should I add it? Uh, or I you are you know, not getting access. OK, so if you want me to add, please go and you know, uh, maybe give a thumbs up on the particular email address. Then I will be, maybe I will be adding it. And that's okay. Uh, you can go to uh, the portal.azure.com. Uh, okay, so this user is saying he is not able to see that resource group. So let me see uh, whether that person is part of that group or not. No? So I just go and open external group. I will see member. 
Okay, so this is not a member of this particular group. So let me add him. So he is the user which I have added in a enter ID. Now I have added you in the uh, group also. Now you should be having access, read access. Yeah, uh, so if you are seeing this, uh, you can just go and open simple. In the same tab, you can go and open portal.azure.com. That's it. It will take you to that uh, Azure website. So do you want me to add inside this or? Let me see whether this user is added. Now this user is already added inside the group. You know, so you should have that access. You, you can see that uh, Sanjay. Saha, you can check. You should have that access because you are a part of that group. If you're not able to see that, uh, you just log out and log in once again. Okay. Now I'll come back to the resource group, training resource group. And you should be able to see there are two you know, virtual network are present. Now inside that virtual network, uh, inside virtual network A, let me just go and deploy the virtual machine. Okay. So let me go and create one virtual machine. So when I go and create a virtual machine, what I'm exactly creating, I'm creating a machine only, but that will be present on the cloud, which will be created virtually. You know? So like uh, you are accessing your machine, you know, you require to provide your credential for accessing the machine. Just like that, you'll have to provide a credential for accessing a virtual machine also. But the only difference is that, uh, you know, instead of creating a machine, you know, on your physical uh, network, you will be creating that machine, you know, uh, virtually on the Microsoft network. Okay, so so we'll be searching for virtual machine. You know, so virtual machine can be deployed inside virtual network. So I can select virtual machine. I can create a virtual machine. OK, but here in this case, you won't be able to create a virtual machine. Why? Because you are not having a required permission. You will be able to see that virtual machine, but you won't be able to, you know, OK. Uh, create the new virtual machine. OK, so where do you want to create that virtual machine? So in the subscription. In which resource group? You know, so I'll choose. Training resource group. What is the name of my virtual machine? You know, so I'll just go and use VM. -A. You know, and. Uh, I will choose. This region. So region uh, is, uh, what you can say, uh, region is uh, a particular geographical location. Okay. So Azure has a uh, lot of regions present. You know, almost uh, 60 plus region are supported or uh, has been set up in the uh, in the particular country. You know, in all across the world, and every country you will find. No, OK, the region. OK, so I am selecting where my machine to be created. No? So why I'm selecting this East US? Because uh, this is most economical. OK, choice for me at least. No? OK, 
when i go and create the virtual machine or any kind of a resource in the east us region as compared to maybe india region you know it will cost me lesser okay so that's only the factor for me you know okay to decide that region but by the way if you want to see you know there are how many regions present in you know okay azure you know so you can just go there is one beautiful website which has been provided by the microsoft i'll just take you to that website azure data center map can you just search for this azure data center map and you just scroll down okay and you have to come to this website i'll just give you that url of that website okay so you can come to this website you know so it will show you Uh, come actually you can uh, you know just concentrate uh, you know currently what i am conducting uh, maybe uh, i'll help you once i finish my demo part no then i'll help you okay but uh, as of now you can uh, concentrate uh, you know okay uh, so you can see you know the entire infrastructure okay and uh, uh, this is the globe which is showing you uh, but i want to see like a uh, view like a map so just i want to see like a map so just click on this button you know, and uh, you can see entire infrastructure you know, is spread it across the world like this okay and what is this you know there are different resources you know so you can go and select which resources you want to see only you know so i'll just deselect all and i will see only i want to see region and if you just look at there are how many regions currently present okay so currently in india region uh, sorry in india geography uh, we are having three region but i am not sure this is not updated okay so we are having three region uh, one is west india india west uh, india south india central so we are having three region okay so you can see central india you can see south india but uh, you can't see a uh, west india okay or i heard that news that uh, west india region has been removed okay not sure okay uh, and you can come over here and you can see this so now we are creating a resource in the east us that means i am creating somewhere over here a virtual machine so inside that region you know there are you know uh, one or more data centers will be present okay and in a data center your virtual machine will be created okay and you will be accessing so currently at least i am sitting in the uh, mumbai you know so i will be accessing you know okay from my laptop you know okay the machine which is created over here okay so now let me go to the region i'm oh, sorry let me go to the virtual machine okay and all other option i'll just go and you know uh, choose default will not go get the time to go into that so only thing i'll just go and make the selection for uh, image for the virtual machine so we will create okay a windows based virtual machine so i'll just go and choose windows you know virtual machine windows server 2022 data center so i'll just go and choose that image okay and it will cost me somewhere around you know this money 5800 30 rupees per month and it is for this configuration so which is having a two cpu 
and 8 GB of RAM. Okay. So if you want to create some bigger configuration where you want uh, some higher configuration, you can just go and explore all the sizes. Okay. And you can see all the sizes are available. Okay. I'll just come over here, type my credential. So once you type the credential, okay. So you're adding one rule in the network security group. You know? So this section, you know, is configuring network security group. We are uh, allowing double three eight nine. That means RDP port. So that means uh, anybody uh, can access uh, if the user are having a valid credential. Okay, valid, uh, you know, access credential, then that person will be able to access. So you're providing RDP. That means in, anybody can take a remote connection. You know, so I can come over here. I can from my laptop if I want to take remote connection, so I can click on this remote desktop connection. I can get the you know, desktop connection of this virtual machine. Okay, so for that, you know, it is necessary for you to have you know this rule configure double three eight nine. Okay. And the same thing you will get in the networking also. So if you come over here in the networking section. Okay, so first of all, you look at this. So it will allow us to select a network. So the network which we have created just now, VNet A. Okay, there are two networks we have created VNet A and VNet B. So, in which network you want to keep this? So, I want to keep this in a, a first network. Okay. Second thing, uh, the public IP address which will be assigned to this. Okay. So public IP address which will be assigned to this. OK, this public IP address. And public IP address, uh, public IPs are going to cost you. You know, so you, you want to delete that public IP address whenever your machine get deleted. You know? So I don't want to keep that public IP address without a machine. So I want to delete that you know, machine. Sorry, I want to delete that IP address also, public IP address also, whenever my machine gets deleted. You know? So with that configuration, you know, I will I will be creating. So I'm just looking at two configuration, basic and networking. You know? In the networking, I'll just choose the virtual network A for creating you know, VM A. Okay. That's it. I'll say review plus create. And finally, it will display me cost. So it is going to cost you around 7.9 rupees per hour. I'm OK with that. Create. And this will take, uh, you know, a two minutes of time to create this virtual machine. OK, so during that time, I'll help other people who yes. Yeah, if it is uh, uh, you know taking you to this page here itself, you can just go and open portal.azure.com. No, 
So you, since you are already logged in, so it will take you to the portal. The switch directory option here you will get switch directory option this is but I'm not sure why you are asking switch directory okay the unknown user is at, uh, asking can we change the port number yes you can change this port number no? uh, so that network configuration you can modify so you can add the port number you can you know okay uh, maybe uh, do some kind of uh, changes also inside the port number but okay for accessing double three eight nine is a port number you know which is a predefined port number for remote desktop so if you want to take a remote desktop connection then you should allow double three eight nine port no, so you cannot say I have allowed uh, double three eight four, you know, okay, port, and I need now the uh, RDP. No, that is not possible. But of course, you can go and do the change in the network security group. Okay, so my VM got created. Okay, and you can see under the overview page. Now you will get an IP address. This is an IP address. Okay. Using this, you know, we will be able to access our virtual machine. So you should also be able to see this kind of a page. Okay. So you can go into the training resource group. You will see, you know, virtual machine VMA. Or else you can go to directly, you know, in this search box, search for virtual machine. You will be able to see virtual machine A. And you come inside, look at the overview and different settings which are available. Okay. So using this, I can take a IP address. I can go to remote desktop connection. You know, paste that IP address and hit connect so once you hit connect button it will ask you a credential and of course if you do have a credential with you the no you will be able to log in to that machine so once i logged in you will be able to see another machine. You know? So this is one more machine which I am accessing virtually, which I am accessing you know, from my laptop. So you will be acting you know, uh, as a global uh, administrator for this machine. You know? So for example, you are using a company machine. You are not having access to write uh, uh, maybe install any software or do uh, some changes inside a setting. You know, you can go and create a virtual machine. Okay, and you can explore, uh, you know, whatever you want to do because you are acting as a global administrator. You do not need a permission. Okay, once you are a global administrator. So currently, I can see I have logged into the virtual machine, isn't it? So now uh, let me just go and uh, make one thing. Uh, I'll just open a server manager and I'll uh, add one IIS. So I'll just go and say add role. So I will say add role. Okay. And feature. So I will click on this add role and feature. Okay. 
and i'll say next no we want to add a role let's say next now what role you want to add so i want to add simply i i s server you know so maybe i want to add this particular i s server maybe uh, i s server uh, will help you to host uh, uh, maybe dot net program or html program so i'm adding is server feature inside the virtual machine so i'll add feature and i'll say next okay so next and say finish so that's all the option we say default and say finally finish so it will install the virtual uh, sorry install the is server and once the is server is installed you will be able to access that is server okay uh, from this machine you know from the local machine as well as from my laptop also i am referring this local machine as a virtual machine or you know we can access uh, this is server from my laptop also okay so once it is you know, installation is completed I'll just show you. Yeah. So installation is finished. Now let me just close this and. let me open a browser here inside uh, remote connection only i'm just opening a browser so this is not my machine this is a virtual machine you know this is the ip address now so i'm opening a browser so since i'm opening the browser for very first time i just need to confirm the browsing for the first time you no know? and if you say local host okay so if you say local host http colon double slash local host okay and 80 it is a port number for is server default port number for is server so if you execute that you know so you should be able to see you know the output of that uh, particular page you know and after that colon 80 if, if i say the by default request will go to the you know uh, port 80 only so if you press enter that 80 won't be visible to you, you know you can see this will show you still that output so if you are not specifying the port number that means you are giving a request on a port 80 okay so i am trying to access the uh, is server which is installed on this machine from the local machine you no know, so i am saying local host you no know, so whatever be the is server installed on this now if i want to access that is server you know from my laptop so this is my laptop okay so can i say local host no i can't say you know so if i say local host it will search for on my machine on the current machine you know where i have you know so this is my local machine it will search for my current machine so if i say you know so there is no uh, you know uh, maybe local uh, is configuration okay so that's why i am getting this particular problem but if i want to access this i can go and take the ip address okay you can take a ip address copy that ip address and you just put that ip address over here okay and you no know, so what do you say we are going to get the output or not first time you know we should get a problem 
okay and uh, if anybody uh, you know anticipate that problem okay they can they can put it in the chat box what is the problem okay okay so i server is not able to reach you know the request you are made ip address is correct ip address i'm just giving a ip address the correct copied ip address only okay but i'm sending a request you know from my machine okay if you look at a diagram okay so let's say i have you know a virtual machine deployed inside uh, this machine this is a vm a okay and i am accessing this from my laptop so this is my laptop no so from my machine if i trying to access this you know by opening the browser typing the ip address of this machine okay colon et okay so from this machine from this laptop your virtual machine is not going to accessible this i server is not going to accessible by default you know i have gone ahead and i have checked i have logged into this i have checked this you know okay it is installed properly okay but it is not accessible to the outer world and the only reason is that okay the rule is not set okay so what rule the rule for port 80 is not enabled so this request whatever request you are going to send from your laptop you know that request will be blocked blocked by whom blocked by network security group okay so this request is blocked block by whom network security group nsg okay and in order to provide you know the access of port 80 i should define incoming rule just like we have defined the rule for 3389 you know so we were doing that thing same thing we were trying to access this virtual machine we are trying to take a remote connection of this virtual machine which is present somewhere in the east us okay from the laptop so of course that uh, call will go over the internet okay and since that 3389 port has been configured in the nsg that request was you know okay granted to you okay but this at okay is not permitted why because there is nsg rule which is missing currently now let me just go and do let's add that nsg rule and once we add that nsg rule okay this page will be accessible you no know? so in order to add i'll go to the network setting okay you can also uh, try this take the ip address and try to access this 172.208.50.254 let me go and give you the ip address yeah correct fazal mahindra were correct no so yeah uh, khalid is also correct so i'll add a rule you know so let's go and add inbound rule you know so we are going to add inbound rule for what so the source can be anything a uh, destination port can be anything source 
and source port destination. Okay, the port I need HTTP port. Okay, so HTTP is 80 port by default, and I will be allowing that port. Okay, so once you say allow, the request will be allowed. And if I say add, okay, so once this rule is in place, okay, maybe we'll have to wait for a couple of seconds. Okay, and let's go and give the request once again you know, after waiting for a few seconds. And let's go and give the request. So over here also, we should be able to see you know, that IIS server. Okay, so once the rule is in place, you should be able to access okay, that IIS server. So let me see open another incognito window and here I'll just type that. So can you see? Because this page is cached, that's why it is coming from the cache memory. So if you refresh it once again, you know, that will also come. Okay. So I am also able to access this IS server which is installed on the virtual machine. Isn't it? So guys, can you access this machine? Yeah, now you should be accessible. Yes. That's why everybody can try this. Yeah, good. Now, I will do same thing. I will create one more virtual machine in the another VNet and will try to, you know, okay, use this. Uh, we'll try to access the same page. Okay. But we have used currently the public IP address. Public IP address. It can be accessible from anywhere as long as it is having access. It can be accessible from anywhere. So like that, if you just go and access it in from this machine by using a public IP address, it will be accessible. But rather than using a public IP address to make this con communication, we will use a private IP address. You know, so what I'll do. I'm having a virtual network. In that I am having a virtual machine. I'll just go and have another virtual machine inside another virtual network. And by using a private IP address, we will try to, you know, okay, check that connection, whether that connect connection or that uh, IIS page is visible, you know, by using a private IP or not. Of course, if I just go and choose that private IP address, okay, so there is a private IP address will be allocated for every virtual machine. So if you go inside network setting or on the overview page also you should get, you know, so this is the private IP address. So if I use from my machine, of course that is not accessible, you know, okay. So from my machine, if I try to access, If I try to access this IP address, of course, uh, the request will not send properly. Okay, because this is a private IP address. So private IP address will use within the network, you know, to communicate. So if you are having, you know, your company network, okay, and from a company network, you want to communicate with another machine from a, within the company, okay, then maybe you can go and make use of that private IP address to communicate within the you know 
uh, network. But of course, my machine is not a part of uh, that network. No, my laptop you know, is not a part of this virtual network. Then of course, I can't give a request like this. Okay. Now, let us go and create a virtual machine. So just like that, we VMA one, uh, sorry, uh, first virtual machine we have created. Like that, I'll just go and create one more virtual machine. I'll choose a resource group. Similar resource group, I'll choose training resource. I'll name it as VMB. Okay, I'll keep region as a East US. Okay, I'll keep the same image. Okay, I'll use credential. Maybe I'll use some credential. Okay, and now the next thing I'll come to the networking. You know, and rather than selecting this as a VNet A, I would like to place this machine inside VNet B. You know, so that's the only change. So it will have this address range. Okay, and by default, I am you know, selecting double three eight nine so that I can take a remote connections also. Okay. What if uh, I don't have uh, you know, public IP address? Can I take a remote connection? No. In that case, it is not possible for you to take a remote connection. You know? Okay. What if I uh, you know do not set that RDP uh, rule? Can I take a remote connection from my machine? No, then in that case also it is not possible for you to take a remote connection. Okay. What if uh, you know? Okay. A machine is not having a private IP. Okay, but uh, remote connection is enabled. Okay, and you want to access it through the uh, from from my machine from my laptop. I want to access that machine, virtual machine. Okay, there are ways to access. You know such machine, uh, the machine which is not having a public IP. You know we can still access it. You know there are a couple of ways available. The one way is uh, Azure Bastion service. So using Azure Bastion service, we can access it. You know using uh, maybe public load balancer. You know so once you create a public load balancer, um, you need to configure uh, the NAT rule, network address uh, destination. Uh, sorry, network uh, address translation rule, NAT rule. You have to uh, configure, and using that, we will be able to get a third way. You know, by using a firewall, also we can get this. You know, okay, okay. So there are ways to access a machine which is not having a public IP. You know, okay. So there are ways to access such machine also. But in this case, we will allocate a public IP and I'll delete that public IP as soon as my machine get deleted. You know, so that's option I'll choose. OK, I'll go. Make sure I'm just selecting a proper unit. I'll just go and review plus create. You know, so let's go and say review plus create. So I'm creating the virtual machine. Oh, 
Okay, meanwhile, I'll take a question. If people are having a question, let me see. No, HTTPS is a different port, Mahindra. It's double uh, 443 is a port number. HTTPS. Uh, how do I, how to make it secure? For making it secure, you'll require a different kind of a coding. Really. Uh, no, uh, maybe you'll have to do uh, the code level you know, changes. So different uh, mechanism for that. Bastion host and open VPN. What would you suggest to connect to the VM? Right, I think. See, uh, uh, if you are you know using uh, VPN uh, connectivity for uh, you know, okay uh, uh, for for setting up uh, the connectivity between your machine, which is present, uh, uh, maybe your machine which is present. Uh, on premise or machine which is present, maybe you are using your own machine, okay, your company machine or your uh, laptop machine, your own machine, okay, which is of course not a part of uh, uh, Azure infrastructure, Azure V, uh, Azure VNet, okay. So you can take a remote desktop, okay. So let me just tell you because this Faisal uh, is asking one question, so it's a good question actually. Uh, you know that will give me an opportunity to explain something. So over here, you know, so you're having uh, Azure infrastructure. You know, and in the Azure infrastructure, you know, uh, I'm having a machine. You know, and you know, uh, this machine is having, not having an uh, public IP. Okay, so this is having a, a private IP, you know, only private IP. Private IP, uh, at least one private IP is assigned whenever you go and create uh, uh, the machine inside the network. No, so at least private IP is assigned. Public IP is not compulsory. Private IP will be assigned. So now, for example, I am having, you know, okay, my company uh, premises, you know, that usually uh, called as on premises network. I'll just say this as a on premise. Okay, on premise network. Or I'm using my personal laptop. You know, okay. This is my personal laptop. You know, so I can take you know um this machine. I can communicate to this machine, you know, and uh, uh, there are many different ways to communicate. You know? So there is something called as, uh, you know, uh, VPN connectivity. So point to site VPN connectivity, you know, so point to site VPN connectivity means what? So you are having on premise network, you know, you are having on premise physical network. Inside that physical network, you are having a couple of machines which are deployed. So if you want all these machine to be able to communicate uh, to this machine, you know, so you can set up, okay, point to site communication, okay. So you can set up point to site VPN, and once you set up point to site, VPN, Okay, you will be able to, you know, okay, uh, we we will be able to access, okay, uh, the VM which is not having you know, private IP, uh, VM which is not having a public IP, will be able to access it through the you know, private IP. Why? Because when you set up this VPN uh, point to side VPN connectivity, all these infrastructure will become a part of this, you know, so they will also get a private IP which is been uh, you know okay assigned to this okay so whatever be the address range maybe the address range of this is you know uh, 
uh, this VNet. is 10.0.0. Dot zero dot zero dot, you know, okay, zero slash 16 is a address. Name. Okay. Uh, so as for the Azure, you remember that uh, five IP address will be reserved. First four IP address and the last IP address. So hence 10.0.0.0, 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 0 .3 will be reserved for the internal purposes. You know, and the very first machine will get one IP address. You know, ten dot zero dot zero dot four. This is the IP address the first resource will get, and whatever be the subsequent resources will be added inside this network, they will get zero dot five, zero dot six, zero dot seven, like that. You know, so they will become a part of this network. And once they become a part of this network, they will be able to communicate uh, with each other by using, you know, a private network. You do not require, you know, uh, the public network. So when you go and set up this uh, uh, VPN connectivity, still your uh, uh, the communication is going to happen over a internet because this is present some other location in your office location. This is present in the Microsoft uh, infrastructure in the region. You know, so communication has to travel over the internet. OK, but that VPN connectivity will encrypt your communication. OK, so that communication will be you no know, okay slower. So since it is encrypted communication, you know, it will be slower. So if you want to transfer some you know data, you know, okay, which is having uh, a big data, you know, OK, it will take OK, uh, OK, some more time to communicate. OK. And this is if you want to uh, set up your personal machine, you are having only one machine. Okay, and you want to set up only this machine to be a part of this. Then you can go and set up what uh, point to uh, point to point VPN connection. VPN, you know, so you can set up this point to point VPN connection. You know, so once you set up this, uh, this machine will also get a private IP and using that private IP uh, since this will also become a part of this. OK, then this machine and this machine, they will be able to communicate via a secure channel. That is a tunnel VPN you know, tunnel. Virtual private network. Now. Uh, this part is uh, related to the VPN connection. Now, uh, Faisal has asked one question. You know, okay. Uh, so, shall we go for you know, okay, uh, this kind of a communication VPN connection, or uh, it, you will suggest me to use uh, Bastion? Okay. So, if you uh, mostly people will prefer this because when you go and uh, make use of a Bastion, Bastion will allow you to come, uh, you know, uh, communicate to that uh, machine by using the portal only so you have to all the time you will have to open that portal okay to uh, take uh, this ip ad, uh, or take or communicate to connect to this particular machine okay from the uh, uh, portal only you will be connecting to that uh, you know, particular machine okay but so in this case okay if you are having uh, you know okay more frequently to access it uh, from the machine you know it's better to put that machine in the vpn uh, you know connection okay and communicate those two machine you know directly okay Yeah, I already told a scenario for Bastion. If you are not having a public IP, then you can go and make use of a uh, Bastion connection. And you will be able to access it uh, through uh, the portal only. Yeah, 
so my uh, machine is ready now now i'm having the two virtual machine you know, if you look at you can also see you are having two virtual machine virtual machine a and virtual machine b so now if you look at there is virtual machine a and virtual machine b so if you look at there is a public ip for this virtual machine i'll take that public ip and i'll copy it over here because i'll be doing some demo i'll take private ip i'll copy it over here so this is a private ip i'll take same thing public ip private ip for second machine so this is the public ip is it uh, i have not allocated public ip okay so there is no uh, public ip allocated so let me take uh, private ip only you refresh it is not showing private ip that is not possible so it will take some time to reload we will wait for few seconds if i remember i have just assigned the public ip also let me see let it reload yeah okay so there you go so it is showing now uh, the public ip so i have assigned so this is my public ip and this is my private ip okay so by default uh, resources from two different virtual network you know they are not able to communicate with each other so by default you know this virtual machine which is present in the vnet one is not able to communicate to this virtual machine and vice versa you know okay so we will test that okay how to test this by logging into okay maybe i'll log in to my virtual machine b Okay, I'll close this connection just to avoid confusion. I'll just open login into the virtual machine B by using the remote desktop connection. I'll just put it that IP address. You know, so I'm putting public IP address and I'm typing the credential no and i'll be able to connect to this okay so currently i have been logged in to the no ip uh, this vm vm b my second vm Okay, so it will initially will take some time to load that PM. I'll just wait for one minute. Okay, so let me close that server manager everything. and i will be checking now by using a private ip can i able to access it of course by using a public ip i can i access this uh, i can access the iis which is installed on the vma 
using a public IP, yes, we can access it from any machine, not only from this machine. From any machine, I can access it. But by using a private IP, I can't. No? So let me take public IP first. I just go and see. I'll go to that VM using this public IP. I'm trying to access. Okay, yes, so I'm able to access. But if I take a private IP, 10 dot 0 dot 0 dot 4, that is a private IP. If I take that private IP, using the private IP, I will not be able to, you know, get the access. Okay. Why? Because of the reason, simple fact, those two virtual machines are present in a two separate virtual network. So when, you know, our resources are present in a two different network, they will be isolated from each other. They will be by default will not be able to, you know, have any, any access by default. So I'm repeating this point. Virtual machine present in the virtual network. They will be isolated or all the resources present in the virtual network. They will be isolated from another resources which are present inside another you know, virtual network. They won't be able to communicate to each other. You know, and in order to provide that communication, you know, okay, I should have okay, network pairing done. Okay. Uh, so let me just go and uh, do network pairing. Just a second, guys. Okay, uh, so let us do that, uh, you know, set up that virtual network. Okay, so I'll just open the virtual network A. So I want to set up that pairing. So I want to set up a pairing uh, between <laughs> Okay, so uh, I want to do a pairing uh, between uh, the VNet A and VNet B. You know? So this is the VNet, uh, you know, I want to pair with this unit, you know. So I want to communicate between these two, you know, okay, virtual network. You know? uh, so uh, we will just take 15 minutes break, guys. You know, okay, and post uh, 15 minutes, uh, we will come back and we'll, uh, you know, set up that uh, connectivity. Okay, so we'll do that connectivity, uh, you know, okay, once we come back from a uh, break. Guys, so let's wait for 15 minutes. Or can we do this? We'll finish this topic and then we'll come back to the uh, next topic only. Okay, so let's it's better. To, let's do this quickly you know, because this will not take a long time. So I'll just come over here and I'll come to the pairing. Okay, and you have to click on this pairing option in order to set up pairing network pairing and over here you will come and you click on the add pairing you know? so what you want to do i want to set up a pairing you know so while setting up pairing 
okay you need to provide the uh, you know link name okay so maybe so this is vnet a to vnet b okay and uh, i want to allow access to the paired network okay so we want that have access to the paired network so that is okay second option i don't want to do uh, you know okay these option i'll just choose the first option okay pairing link name you know okay so when you establish a pairing you know so it will be established from you know vnet a to vnet b and as well as it will allow me to configure from reverse direction also you know from vnet b to vnet a okay so it is having a configuration for you know both directions you know so this is the configuration we are doing from vnet a to vnet b and this is the configuration i would like to do it you know vnet b to vnet so I'll do that communication and very thing, uh, very important thing, of course, over here, I'm just allocating VNAT. So I'm, I want to pair with which network. So I should select that. Okay. So I'll select VNAT. B. I want to communicate with VNAT. B. Okay. And once you do this setup, I'll say add. Okay, and by default, gateway transit is not uh, enabled, you know. And let me just tell you, you know, what is the meaning of that gateway transit, you know. So when you have this kind of a setup, so this virtual network is communicating with another virtual network. Uh, you know, so I'm having virtual network B. Okay, and uh, they can communicate with each other. But what if, you know, okay, uh, this network is having point to uh, site connection, or this network is having point to point uh, point connection. You know, so can this machine, because that machine is also going to be a part of this network. You know, so can this machine will able to access this? So if you set up a gateway transit, you know, OK, yes, they will be able to access it. But otherwise, you know, they won't be able to access it. OK, by now the connection must be ready. Let me just go and see. That connection or that connection. Uh, should be visible over here in the form of a pairing. Okay, can you see this status? It is connected. So VM A to B, it is connected. And like that, you will see VM B to A. If you just go inside VM B, you will see VM B to A. And now we should be able to access. Okay. So this IIS server, which is installed on so I'm trying to access it from VMB. I'll be. I'm inside the. Okay, let me see, just figure it out I'm, whether I'm inside the virtual machine. Not inside the virtual machine, so let me just go inside that. So now I'm inside the virtual machine. Okay, now if I just go and reload this particular page, okay, so I should be able to see the output of IS page.
Okay, so can you see this? So over here, I am inside the virtual machine. So this is my VM B2. This is my VM B2. And I am able to access from VM B2, you know, okay, this IIS server. And of course, by using a public IP, I can able to access it. You know, there's no problem. But using private IP, you know, I will be able to access it. Okay, and this is this communication is possible because you have uh, set up uh, uh, the the pairing network pairing, VNet pairing. You know? So you can also try this. Uh, you know? Of course, you can't try it, but you can see the setup at least. You know? Okay, so you are having a read access to you know see all the VMs and you know uh, virtual network. So you can see see this. You know? And that communication, uh, you know, currently we are doing uh, VM B to A, but uh, reverse direction also, if you do that, you know, it will be, you know, able to connect in the reverse direction also. Okay, guys. So let me take few questions. Okay, and then we'll wait for a break. NSG is a network security group or this where you can uh, uh, specify the inbound and outbound rules. You know? So you can uh, configure which uh, port number access is allowed, you know, which port number is not allowed to access. And network interface card you know, is attached to the virtual machine. Okay. Uh, where your public IP address you know, will be uh, you know, associated. Network interface card is uh, you know, related to the virtual machine, uh, which can be associated to your, you know, uh, the IP address. No, uh, NSC can't be assigned to the uh, VNet. NSC can be assigned to only two things, uh, virtual network interface and second one is subnet. You know, so these two, uh, NSC can be assigned. No, VM is running, no? My both uh, of the VM is running. You can see, no? Can show you? Yeah, both are running. So this is both running. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I think. Ah, Khalid. For single energy, how many VM can be attached? There are multiple, you know, uh, VM can be attached. So I can define uh, NSC and multiple, you know, uh, virtual network uh, interface cards can be allocated. Chala. Uh. Okay, so I can create a single network interface group, you know, okay, NSG, network security group, sorry. Okay, and uh, uh, there might be a you know okay multiple VM can be associated with uh, you know okay single network interface uh, sorry network security group. So it will be no, it's actually a good question. You know, so it will be uh, you know, will be like this. So in a network, so for example, I'm having. A couple of machine, okay. So machine, uh, machine, which is present over here, okay. Machine which is present over here, you know. So there are uh, three machine which are present inside my network, you know. So you can create a network security group, okay. 
because network security group is also additional uh, or uh, uh, one resource from the Microsoft Azure. And I can associate this network security group. OK, to either to. I can associate this network security group either to a particular machine or I can associate this to, you know, OK. Uh, to the subnet. You know? So I can go and associate this to directly to a machine. Individually. Or if I don't want that, I can directly assign it to the subnet. So whatever be the machine which are part of that subnet, you know, so all these rule which is present over here will be applicable uh, to that you know, machines also. OK, and we can define what multiple NSG rule also for a, you know, OK. Uh, so you can have an issue rule which is uh, you know defined at subnet level and you can define an issue for you know the particular machine level also it, that is also possible okay so whatever be the incoming request you know OK, they will go first from the rules which are present inside the subnet level, uh, you know, network security group. If they are, you know, if your request is able to cross that, you know, then, you know, that request will go from, OK, uh, this, uh, uh, the NIC level, you know, OK, network interface card level or virtual machine level, the initial group. And if the request is passed from both this uh, network security group, then only it will reach to the virtual machine. Otherwise, it will be blocked. OK, got it. So I think, uh, you know, my point is clear to you. Yeah, so the recording, uh, you know, uh, the of the session is uh, I think this recording is going on. Uh, maybe Archie will share uh, you recording once after the session. Yeah, definitely. Uh, as I just now said, it is possible uh, to define multiple industry for a single. So if I need to enable a port in one machine, so if I make the change in MSU, will it be applicable to all the associated machine? Oh uh, yes, if it is applicable, uh, you know, uh, NSU is applied on the uh, subnet level, whatever be the machine which are attached to it, that rule will be applicable to all the machines. Okay, but if it's if it is, uh, you know, uh, NSC rule is, uh, you know, okay, defined at the NIC level, okay, then for that particular machine will be, uh, you know, applicable. Huh, yes, you can say that, you know, okay, and internally it is, uh, you know, doing that only uh, when you go and, uh, you know, uh, do that pairing. Internally, the route table are getting, uh, you know, okay, modified. Okay, so it is like a uh, routing only. Okay, so uh, unknown user is asking, can we say pairing as a routing? Yes, it is. Ultimately, it will do some changes uh, in the routing table only. Okay. If we have two MSC for a particular minimum, either of NEC allow then. No, that is not possible. OK. So it should be, you know, crossing both the NSU. Then only it should be, you know, it is possible. Because it's a security group. It is just like a firewall. OK, so anything is blocking, you know, that means that request will be blocked. It is related to the security. What kind of a, uh, LMS you are asking, Nitin? So I'm not understanding your question. Oh, 
Okay, so I believe I have answered all the question. I think. I think we should take a break, you know. Okay, and we'll wait for fifteen minutes break only. Okay, and after that, uh, yeah, uh, we'll take one more question. This is I have existing machine in the Azure portal which are enable backup. So this uh, this how can we generate Azure? Sorry. So for this, how can we generate Azure? Out of the existing machine in a directory. Which are enable backup. This is not backup. So, so there are different tool might be available to generate the report. Uh, but what kind of a report you are generating? The questions still not clear to me. Okay, but uh, those tool, you know, okay, uh, whatever be the tool are related to other purposes that might be related to the development purposes, okay, uh, which are not uh, the part of this, uh, you know. So there might be a certain reports, you know, okay, which might be available. Okay, so uh, one thing I can tell you, okay, uh, which uh, uh, internally uh, manage. By the uh, Azure, uh, something called as a log set will maintain. You know, so by uh, using that log, you know, we can generate some kind of a report, some metrics. You know, so you can uh, make use of Azure Monitor for that purpose. Okay, and you can make use of uh, something for the virtual machine. You can you go and use uh, uh, the insight application insight. So like that, you are having a network insight also. Okay, so you can explore that uh, topic. Uh, no, you, uh, it will be get uh, uploaded. Uh, the thing it will be get uploaded on the YouTube channel. Uh, so Archie will share that uh, link of a YouTube channel, so we can see all uh, all of uh, you know recording are available. You know, okay, for all these you no know, sessions. So Archie requesting you to share that uh, YouTube channel link to uh, you know, everybody. Okay, uh, so we'll wait for a break now. Uh, so we'll take 15 minutes break and we'll come back after 15 minutes and we'll, you know, uh, do the last part of the session, uh, which is an app service. Uh, okay, so let's complete that topic really quick. And I just start my counter. So I'll just take 15 minutes of. break. Save it.
okay guys so we'll we'll start uh, i hope uh, uh, am i audible to you can you just confirm please uh, if you are written from the break uh, can anyone confirm yeah thank you thank you so much abhishek okay so i'll just start uh, with the last last half of the session uh, in which uh, we'll see uh, you know the app service you know that is also uh, uh, one more important uh, service from the uh, azure i'll be talking about uh, app service so again uh, before we uh, speak about that practically let me just go and explain you conceptually what is that app service okay so app service is uh, one of the platform as a service and uh, one of the service from a you know category of a you know pass it is stands for platform as a service what app service it is one of the category of a platform as a service okay. so you are having something called as platform as a service and in that if you uh, go and look at the app service app service is capable of uh, deploying uh, the code which is written in any programming language so it has a support of a variety of a programming language you know so for example we are developing you know some code let's suppose say we are developing a dotnet code okay you consider it as a dotnet code or you can consider it as a java code that code can be anything okay so you need a code okay and <clears throat> where this code will be deployed so you require underlying you know, software you need to run maybe dotnet dotnet core example we need a dotnet core huh? or we need jdk then once we have a jdk or dotnet core you know, whatever be the project uh, will be uh, deployed on that uh, jdk or you know, or dotnet okay for in this case uh, we need a tomcat also tomcat or ia server uh, uh, this is going to be a web application okay so in order to have this uh, installation so this is what uh, this can be uh, my code what is this this is my code which i would like to publish okay what is this uh, this is maybe this seems to be my some kind of a runtime library no okay i'll call this as a middleware middleware software okay or let me just call this as a runtime software okay so once we have that runtime software no okay that runtime software or middleware software needs to be installed on the top of a particular you know virtual machine no so we need a virtual machine also so that may be a windows based or that may be a linux based virtual machine no okay but uh, sorry uh, operating system not virtual machine okay you need the operating system windows based operating system or uh, linux based operating system so you need the operating system it could be linux or it could be windows no okay. 
and uh, in order to install that operating system we need some kind of a physical uh, you know infrastructure you know? so physical infrastructure that means uh, maybe we need some kind of a you know uh, disk network you know? so all those physical component also we need we need some infrastructure related to a disk or network you know? so this physically somewhere we need you know we are not going to create it uh, physically on our side but physically somewhere it need to create na no? so where it will be created so when you go and create uh, you know app service you know along with the app service there is one more resource is going to create it or it will allow me to configure you know another resource and that resource name is you know app service plan and in this app service plan i will have you know everything defined okay so app service plan you know, is going to um, uh, provide you a required infrastructure to be able to execute your code you know so you are going to create two resources one is app service plan and another is app service you know? so app service is going to hold only the application so you can see this this is your okay web app or i'll call this as a web app okay and this is going to be providing you you know web app plan you know? which is also technically called app service okay so this app service plan is going to define you know how strong you know you need your infrastructure you know? so there are various app service plan provided by the azure depending on your requirement or depending on your feature requirement or depending on your hardware you know requirement you can choose an appropriate plan okay and you can go and define the code for the uh, application go and deploy that code you know okay on the you know uh, on the uh, app web app okay so this is your platform as a service you know? so whatever be the infrastructure required for executing this code it will be provided by okay the azure and on top of that infrastructure whatever be the operating system okay it will be also provided by the azure okay and on top of that the runtime stack for executing that particular code which will be also provided by the azure you know okay so hence it is called as platform as a service so that it is leaving only okay one layer which i can manage so only the okay the code i need to publish okay and i need to manage that particular code everything else will be taken care by the azure okay so here in this you cannot control you know uh, this physical uh, network disk you know, operating system or linux you cannot control that you can go and choose which uh, you know version of a uh, you know jdk you want which version of a dot net you want you know you can choose that but once you install you cannot uh, see that installation in actual physical machine you know it will be created okay but uh, as a user we don't have a option to see that so let's save this and i'll just save this as a zero it and i'll save it as app service
Okay. Uh, so let me see. Is there any kind of a questions on this? Screen is visible, no? Is it not visible? Deepak, uh, I'll just stop sharing and I'll reshare once again. If it is not visible, then otherwise you'll have to, you uh, know, uh, re log in. Just drop from this and maybe rejoin. That will help. Yeah. Uh, I've just reshared it. Is it visible now? Uh, Deepak? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Adish. Uh, Tanush is asking some question. Customize access to as per our requirement. Yeah, yeah, we can. Customization means what, uh, you know, okay. You have to choose the app service plan, you know. Uh, so whatever be the app service plan, which uh, they provide, you can, you can just, uh, you know, uh, use those app service plans. Okay, so that point I'll uh, just explain uh, when we just see the practical. Okay, so I hope uh, there is no other questions related to this. You know? So this is our app service. Okay, and on top of that, uh, we are going to uh, deploy our code. Okay, and let me let me just set up this. And set up this. I'll just go inside the portal. Okay, over here, I'll just say app service. I want to create an app service. Okay, so we'll create a new app service, new web app. And then when I just go and Create a new web app. It will ask me where you want to create a web app in which resource group. So I should select that resource group name. So I'll choose training resource group, training RG. Okay. It'll ask me what is the name of your resource group. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, name of your app service. So let me just go and make use of synergetics. So synergetics dot azure website dot net. Okay. And the runtime stack, it's just going to allow me to select which code you know you want to publish. So I can choose what uh, dot net is because uh, I'm not going to do any kind of a dot net or Java deployment. I'll just take a simple HTML code and I'll just apply that HTML code. Okay. <clears throat> For that, uh, my JDK or my .NET you know, will work. Okay, and this is the option it is showing you uh, whether you want to choose Windows or Linux. Okay, in which region you want to keep. So I'll keep it in the East US. And what pricing plan is asking us a pricing plan and this is where you know i should choose a pricing plan you know? so i will explore all the pricing plan which are available i'll explore all the pricing plan and based on the feature or based on the you know okay uh, the hardware i can choose you know which pricing plan is suitable for us so more feature we'll choose, you know, of course, we'll have to pay more. Okay. Okay. You are having all the pricing plans. Okay. So pricing plan, which are provided by them, we can choose that pricing plan. Okay. So most popular pricing plan, you can see it in a popular option. You, know? so you can choose what the free plan. Okay, 
So if you are uh, using it for testing purpose, maybe training purpose, okay, you can just go and choose a free plan. So in this free plan, it is not going to cost you anything. Okay. Or by the way, app service plan is going to okay cost you a money. But if you choose a free plan, it will not cost you anything. Okay, and web app, you know, there is no charge for keeping the code. So you can keep any kind of a code. Okay, but you know, you have to pay for this app service plan. You know, so how strong you are choosing your app service plan based on that, you know, you will have to pay the money to the Microsoft. Okay, so if I'm choosing a free plan, but there is limited feature you will get. In the free plan, only 60 minutes of uptime you will get. Delhi, you will get 60 minutes of uptime. Okay. And that 60 minutes of uptime will be shared. So if I'm deploying two applications, so it is possible to deploy multiple applications on the same app service. So on the one virtual machine, you can deploy multiple application yes i can deploy you know so like that you are having one more application dotnet or java application and you want to deploy it to the same app service plan it is possible so whatever number of application you are deploying okay they will share that capability of an app service you know? so capability of a plan it will share by you know the web app the number of web app you are going to you know, deploy so for example, I'm choosing a free, free web app, you know, a free app service plan. So on the free app service plan, I'm having two web app, web app one and web app two. So they will both will share the feature of app service plan free. So there is one feature is that you will get only 60 minutes of uptime per day. You know? So that capability, you know, will be shared by them. So maybe if this is using 40 minutes, this is using 20 minutes. So your 40, uh, 60 minutes of a day is completed. Okay. So whatever be the plan you are choosing on that app service plan, I can deploy num many number of uh, web app, but you'll have to keep in mind, all those web app will share the app service plan you know, feature. It will be shared. It will not provide every web app service and you know, it will not provide app service plan okay just to conclude this point you no know, all web app will share the app service plan okay So you will get uh, no okay in terms of uh, memory you will get this memory in terms okay and if you just go and come to the feature view you no know, the feature like uh, you're having a daily backup uh, slots you know whether you can auto scale or not so that feature, so if you choose more stronger plan, you will get you know, all the features. Okay, but in the free plan, you will not get uh, these features. Okay. So if I choose standard plan, you know, in the standard plan, I'm getting almost all features slot uh, staging slot i can create a five staging slot daily backup i can take uh, up to 10 daily backup and i can define the auto scaling rule also okay so that capability uh, provides standard plan so based on your need you can choose it so i'll just go and choose a standard plan I'll select it okay and later 
if you feel that you know standard plan is not enough for you you should have chosen what uh, different plan later also you can go and you know okay uh, scale up this plan okay so scaling for this uh, you know okay auto uh, app service plan is either you can pick up a you know stronger plan that is more premium plan or you can pick up uh, you know a weaker plan that is uh, you know uh, uh, which is uh, in terms of a feature and facility will be weaker okay so you can do auto scaling of a plan you can scale up or scale down you can upgrade the plan you can downgrade the plan you know okay and later also you can create that you can you can do that after creating also you can do that so let me say okay, with this information i just go and choose i don't have to see database deployment is not nothing in okay because i'll just do that okay uh, networking public access is okay so everything is okay seems okay and i'll say finish okay, plus create and I just go and say create Okay, let me see is there any kind of a questions uh, so you're talking faisal you are talking about i think uh, the app service basically this is like a container this is like a function container is not a vm it's more at a kernel level i do same app service yeah app service you know okay it's like uh, some kind of a machine app service plan is going to give you some kind of a machine where it will give you the opportunity to deploy your code you know it is a place to deploy your code okay so it's not a function okay because function is a, you know separate concept where you can execute a serverless uh, execution by using uh, azure function you know so here you are going to deploy a full fledged uh, you know application web application so app service you know is host you or it will allow you to host your full fledged application web application okay so for hosting that web application you need uh, some other component you need to require a code but on top of that uh, you know okay thus below that you need the software you know below that you need a operating system so all those feature will be provided by the app service plan yeah so uh, it will be like a container so for example I, if i create a you know a app service okay as a code i have created i can create a container from that code okay so if you have created some kind of a code you can create a container out from that code okay so that uh, your container can be shipped to any other uh, you know location okay so that you do not require a different uh, you know uh, versions okay or there won't be any kind of a clashes of a version of a software okay so app service plan will give you a place where you can deploy your you know web app yes uh, you know uh, you can do this you know this is very good question you know uh, so how uh, mahindra is asking how it is different from creating vm 
with needed OS and libraries, you know, okay, having the code. Okay, so we can just go and you know deploy our code on the VM also. Okay, but uh, you know, so uh, uh, then that uh, maintaining that uh, you know software. Okay, whatever be the runtime software we are you know installing on that, you know, it will be a responsibility lies on our side. Okay, so whatever be the uh, auto scaling you know you want to do okay so auto scaling you know uh, that responsibility okay lies on our side okay but if you go and make use of you know okay the app service plan instead you know okay you can do you know okay auto scaling also okay you do not have to manage that software also okay it will be provided uh, you know as a capability of a you know okay app service plan okay so i hope uh, you know i'm able to answer you so it is yes indeed it is a managed service so it will be managed by azure okay so my service my app service is created and we can see that there are there must be a two plan or oh, sorry two resources will be created One resource is your app service, and another resource is an app service plan. This is the name of your app service. And if you look at, there must be also created some kind of an app service plan. No, you can see this. This is the name of our app service plan. Secure. We can see you know, the resource app service plan which is created. Okay. And from inside this app service, I can come over here. Okay. And I can scale up or scale out. The scaling rule is uh, you no, know, will be provided by the Azure. Or we can define the rules for you know okay scale scale up or scale out okay so when that particular rule okay uh, hit now then that automatically you know uh, that scaling will happen okay but if you are installing that software on your VM and if you are doing the deployment manually okay so the scaling is uh, the feature which you will not get it over there so that you will have to do it uh, you know okay. Uh, manually okay and uh, apart from that you will not going you will not get the feature like uh, you know okay slot deployment you know okay so this is very good feature you know you can uh, deploy your code before you know it move to the production you know we can deploy our code uh, to you know staging slot no, so that will give me an opportunity to test my code whether it is running properly or not you know even if i even before i go to the you know production code i will just go and execute my code into the you know something similar you know staging slot okay so this uh, this app service is going to provide you a lot of features that will be missing if you're doing the deployment uh, from the uh, the virtual machine but if you require entry entire control okay then of course then the uh, deploying the you know uh, uh, software on the virtual machine is you know can be useful okay so here if i go inside the app service here down below i should see some kind of a app service editor can you see this app service editor and if i just go and click on this app service editor no it will give me you know the opportunity to uh, maybe see the code okay by the way if I just go and copy this code, if I 
they copy the URL, put the URL on the browser. You know, this is the code by default you will be able to see. Okay. So I want this code to be changed. You know? So I can go and open the app service editor. By the way, you can see this code also. I'll just give you this code. Uh, this URL, take the URL and you know, just use it in the browser. Access in a browser. And I'll go to the app service. In that app service editor, app service editor. This is the app service editor. I'll open that app service editor. Okay, I'll say open editor. Okay, so once I uh, open the app service editor, we will see this code. Okay, that code gives you this output. Okay, so if I don't want this output, I can just go and select everything. I'll just say what H1. H1 is, by the way, tag HTML tag. No, and I can say learning app service. Okay, I can save it. That, by the way, it saved it automatically. And once you save, you, know, you can just go and see the refresh this. You will see that learning app service. You know, and that uh, is online actually. Okay, so you can also go and check. So whatever changes you are you know, doing, that changes you can see it uh, you know, immediately online. Okay. So this is one way of uh, doing a deployment. You know? now, I can do that deployment if a code is present on my uh, local machine. You know? So I can either do the deployment uh, by using any kind of a editor. Like for example, I can use uh, you know, Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio or uh, uh, Eclipse you know, to do the deployment. OK. or we can do it through the Git also. Okay. Or, you know, simple, I can just, uh, you know, uh, by using FTP file transfer protocol, I can just simple drag and drop. I can do that also, deployment. Or I can use a CI CD pipeline also you know, to do the deployment. You know? So I'll use one deployment. You know? Okay. One way of, uh, you know, uh, deployment. And uh, we'll see that in action. No? But before that, I would like to create one slot. So currently, I'm having only one slot, which is called as production slot. So if I go in the deployment, I'll see under deployment, deployment slot. Inside that, I will be able to see only one slot, production slot. And your hundred percent traffic is you know, going and uh, you know hitting your production slot URL. With this, I would like to create you know your uh, something called as a staging slot. You know? So why do we need a staging slot? Okay, so let's understand that first. So if you are having app service over here. There will be some production slot. There will be some staging slot.
okay so this is where your end customer will be accessing your product or your application or your website so this is where your end customer will access your uh, you know web website or your web application so end customer will go and hit this Okay, so who are going to hit this end users? Okay, end users will hit this URL, and uh, the request will move to the go to the production slot. You know, okay, and whatever with the output, you will get it from the production slot. Okay, then why there is a need of something called as a you know uh, additional slot that usually your testing slot or the name of the slot can be anything okay but i'll just go and give that name of the slot as a staging slot okay and first of all why do you need that something called a staging slot so if your application is online if your application is up and running and uh, you know okay uh, it it got one uh, additional feature to be incorporated or there is one new feature to be incorporated in the running application you know okay so that feature, okay, uh, our company side developer will work on those feature, you know, develop that feature, you know, okay. And uh, uh, when finally it is completed, uh, you know, somebody will go and deploy. So they will go and deploy, you know, to the production, you know, directly, you know, that new feature, you know, which you have created, you know, it is risky to deploy on the production, okay. Because that is where you know, okay, my end customers are you know, accessing. So there will be a certain downtime. If you are planning to deploy, you can deploy, but there will be some downtime. Okay, so we'll have to take uh, the production slot uh, for you know, okay, uh, you'll have to uh, stop that production server, or maybe you'll have to okay, uh, intimate to the end user that this in this time you your application won't be available. Okay. So that we can deploy it over here. Okay, but you know we'll not do this. The app service provide you something called as slot creation. So whatever be the new feature, you know, okay, the developers or the people from our organizations, you know, okay, will deploy that uh, you know new changes or new feature, you know, to the staging slot. Okay. And staging slot is something which is similar to the production slot only. All the, you know, okay, environment you will get it uh, like a production slot. But the only thing is that the staging slot, my client will not be accessing. You know, so staging slot, my users, my testers will go and access, test it. Okay. And uh, once it is tested, okay, they will inform somebody okay it is working fine or if it is not working fine okay your tester will test it or maybe some people from the client side also will test it uh, something called as a uat you know okay will also happen user acceptance test okay if user agreed you know, with that feature okay then it is ready to you know, move to the production so once you know, the development is completed testers are also happy uat is also done okay then you know okay this slot can be changed you know so whatever be the staging slot you are having that will become the production slot and whatever be the code which is present in the staging uh, sorry production you know it will move to the staging okay and this is your swiping normal swiping you know, and this process is also called as swap. Okay, so when you do a slot swapping, okay, so whatever be the new code, you know, okay, it will appear in the production, and your end user will able to see that new new code of a you know application. Okay, and whatever be the old code of a production that will come into inside you know the staging. So when you go and do this, there will be a zero downtime. Okay, there is not 
a single minute of a downtime as per the microsoft you know okay they ready zero downtime when you do this slot deployment okay so we will see this you know in action and you know after that you know we'll close this our session so let's see this in action okay, this is going to be my ninth and slot deployment okay and by the way this is also called as blue green deployment pattern there is a popular deployment pattern this is blue green deployment pattern okay so let's go and see this in action so we have our production slot i'll just go and create a staging slot also so i'll just go and create a staging slot okay uh, so we have created the production slot staging slot so as per the you know standard app service plan it is allowed to create a uh, five you know slot like this so i can create up to five slot like this okay but in this case two is okay okay so what is this staging slot is going to do uh, so staging slot so if you look at just like production slot you are having a url of production slot you are accessing that url over here you know of production slot just like that you will get you know one unique url for this staging slot you know the only thing in the url this name of the slot will be added otherwise you will see exactly same url you know? so this is the url of staging slot so i'll just go and provide you this url also okay so this this is the url i have provided you uh, for a production slot this is the url i just provided you you know for a staging slot and the output from staging slot you will see like this production slot you will see like this just go on this editing push this i open the output in a separate window so this is the output from staging and this is the output from production uh, so let me say remove the staging then i'll get the output from production so this is the output from production i just miss this okay and this is the output from staging you know? okay so staging slot will also have you know, something similar the app service editor so i can do the deployment from uh, the local machine you know but i'll do it through the editor only app service editor which is provided by the azure i'll open the editor once you open the editor you will see one page okay and you can see you no know, so you can go and write over here maybe uh 
H1. So I can just go and write, you know, uh, like HTML code. HTML. I'll just quickly write HTML. Body. The body. I'm going to have H1. Uh, service version two. I close H one. Okay, and when I close H one, I'll see that version two present the app service. Okay, uh, but let me just go and add. Uh, okay, for this maybe. Some kind of a styling style equal to maybe I'll just go and say color. No? Okay, maybe blue. So I'll just use this styling. You know? And if I see the output of this particular page, okay. So this time I'll see the output like this. Okay, and the production slot, you know, you can see the output. This is the output of a production slot. You will see the output of a production slot like this. So there is new feature which has been added, which is present on the staging slot. Okay, your end customers are accessing this version of the application. New feature is added. Tester will test it. You know, okay. Uh, there will be a, some kind of a UAT will happen. User acceptance test, and once it is you know finalized, everything is properly done. You know, then I can go and decide to take this code you know, into the production. You know, so I can do that as a part of a swipes swiping, you know, slot swiping. Okay, so I can just move this code from staging to production, from production to Staging. I can move this code by using the swiping. Okay, and this, if I do this, you know, there won't be any kind of a downtime. Okay, and how to do this? Let's open that. Uh, uh, portal. I have to go to the app service which I have created. Open that app service. Okay. Go to, you know, there should be an option of a swipe. Is it visible. Let me just go and refresh it. After that, it will be visible. Okay, so this is enabled now swipe. So either you can click on this swipe button or swipe link to perform the swipe, or you can come to the slot also, this screen also. You can come inside this. Okay, and you will get a button or link to perform the swiping. So you can click on this. Okay. And uh, perform the swiping. Okay. So that swipe will actually take some time, but during that time, you will be able to see your old code. You know, so that will not uh, you know, go down. And once that uh, you know, swiping is completed successfully, this code, you know, output of this will come over here. Okay, and this code will go over here. Okay, so in case you know after testing you know everything, in case you are finding any kind of a you know challenges in the 
production environment then you can take this old code into the production you know so once you do the swiping you can you know okay if you are having an issue with the production new production code which is this you can go and swipe back once again okay okay so let me see this is in a process this is not completed yet okay so now i think this is completed now i can just go and close this okay and i can just refresh this production slot so when you refresh production slot you no know, so your code will appear version 2 code you no know? and if you refresh this staging you know your old production slot uh, will appear over here you know so this is your blue green deployment pattern you no know? so whatever be the new feature you will develop that new feature will be tested on the staging slot first okay once the testing is completed once the you know user acceptance test is also completed then you can go and decide to swipe once you swipe your staging slot will become your production slot or code of a staging slot will become will go to the production slot and vice versa okay i'll just take few question you know so if you have a question i'll just take the questions John is asking one question. Is the switch happen at the DNS record level? So it will not happen at the DNS record level, you know, uh, because it will happen at the code level only, I believe. Because you can see, you no, know, this URL, whatever be the earlier, you know, code of a production that will come back inside this. okay and whatever be the code of a staging slot you know you will see that uh, the output of a staging slot in the uh, the production slot okay so that uh, swiping will happen at uh, code level i suppose okay so if you have any other question you can post those question okay um if you don't have a, a question you know we will just close this session or before closing this session you know okay if archi wants to you know add anything uh, she can add archi are you there yes sir yeah so you can add uh, any any point if you want to say if you want if you have any kind of finance yeah you can you can arshi you can speak now. i hope uh, you are speaking arshi you are not mute yes yes sir Oh, uh, thank you, sir, for this insightful session, guys. I shared the feedback form, so please fill this feedback form if you like the session.
गाइज बिफोर लिविंग द सेशन प्लीज फिल दिस फीडबैक फॉर्म